It's another stormy evening for parts of central and eastern Kentucky. We'll track that in the heavy rain threat just ahead. It is something they say they have wanted for years, and now emergency management officials in Scott County say they're excited to hear county leaders are discussing the possibility of purchasing a new high-tech weather station. A woman visiting Kentucky got some help from a search and rescue team when her dog went missing. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Jennifer Palumbo reporting. Some of our area is seeing showers and storms right now, and some of those could be severe. We are bracing for more rain in the bluegrass tonight, and it looks like that will continue into the weekend. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, who's tracking what's on the first alert defender. Chris? Yeah, another booming afternoon and evening for parts of the area, guys. And as you mentioned, that is a sign of things to come as we get a tropical influence from the leftovers of Bill over the next several days. Live first alert defender is starting to crank now with some thunderstorms just to our west, and those will be the ones we'll focus on going forward. Short term, though, it's all about some thunder and lightning across southern and southeastern. Kentucky. Thankfully, this batch is beginning to weaken just a little bit. The farther southwest that we go, though, Somerset, Monticello, getting down into McCreary County, a lot of noise with this little storm that is right on top of Somerset that's heading to the north. That's a little offshoot of that thunderstorm complex into parts of Wayne County. Thunder and lightning here northwest of Flemingsburg, back into parts of Bath County. Notice the Lexington Metro okay, but look to our west now. Signs that we're starting to see those thunderstorms beginning to pop. One little cell in Anderson County, another in the northern parts of Washington County, and that's usually a sign that Defender is starting to pick up on these little storms that are gathering steam. Big time complex of storms now between Owensboro and Louisville. Whatever's out here is going to roll its way eastward, and we have additional. Clusters of thunderstorms trying to pop behind those. So the stage may be set this evening for rounds of thunderstorms to move over the same real estate. Tropical sky showing up into much of the area. How about this view out of eastern Madison County now from our weather watcher out of uh, urban in Estill County? That's at Virgil Edwards, and he's seeing those towering thunderheads, and that's the view you're going to be seeing over the next few days. The view on Defender coming out of Texas, guys, absolutely spectacular. Look at that swirl. That is what's left of Bill. And it has a ticket for the bluegrass state. We'll show you when it arrives just ahead. Thanks, Chris. As crews work to clean up from the latest round of storms, emergency management officials in Scott County hope to get new equipment that would help them track the storms ahead of time. The Scott County Fiscal Court is discussing the purchase of a $20,000 mesonet weather station for the county. They say that the station would give them current, not predicted data, including temperature, humidity, wind direction, and speed, as well as precipitation. Emergency management officials say the station would help them from start to finish during snowstorms, flooding, and strong winds. So it definitely helped us to prepare for and then uh, recover from uh, having good data that we can provide to people that need uh, insurance claims or uh, disaster declarations. Uh, it's going to be helpful from the beginning all the way to the end of an incident. If the county does purchase the station, officials say the next important step will be deciding where to put it. It requires being placed in a wide open area. We'll have more on the request for the Mesonet station on WKYT News coming up at 530. A Southern Kentucky family says it was an anniversary they wish they didn't have to commemorate. One year ago yesterday, a Laurel County man was killed in a crash. The person police say caused it is charged with murder. WKYT's Phil Pendleton talked to the family of Jerry Thompson in a story that's new at 430. His family installed this large wooden cross yesterday on the one year anniversary on his death. I'm standing just off of Kentucky Highway 30 between London and McKee. Police say Thompson was killed when his windstream van he was driving collided head on with a truck driven by Justin Weibels. Several months later, Weibels was indicted on murder, reckless driving, and wanton endangerment charges. He was driving on the opposite side, opposite side of the road, Justin Wibbles was, um, running at a high rate of speed. And um, I guess, you know, people seen it, him coming their way, and uh, a lady stopped in front of my dad, so he swerved into his emergency lane to miss hitting the lady. Now, despite the murder charge, Weibels is not in jail. And in fact, he was recently arrested on another charge, and he's still 
remains free on bond as far as we could tell. We're going to have a lot more on that coming up at 530. But for now, in Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And the suspect is due in court again next Monday. Search and rescue crews have found a missing dog in central Kentucky. Maddie, an English setter, ran off at the BP in Stanton last night after chasing something into the woods. Victor Puente is in Powell County where Maddie was reunited with her owner. The members of Powell County's search and rescue team are used to being called out for missing people. That doesn't mean they won't answer the call for help when a four legged family member goes missing. Maddie has a 12 year old English setter. Her owner, Shelly Shepard, Stopped last night at the BP in Stanton while on her way home to Indiana after visiting some relatives in eastern Kentucky. She told search and rescue members that as she was getting gas, Maddie took off behind this building, possibly chasing a cat. They began a search of the area but couldn't find her. Your mind, like your heart and everything won't let you stop. But rescuers did post her picture on their Facebook page and the page Friends of Powell County's Pets. This morning, someone posted that she came to their house last night. Uh, around 11 o'clock at night, went to somebody's home and laid on their porch the rest of the night until I showed up to pick her up. The Facebook page did it. I mean, obviously, that shows that's, that's how we found Maddie. That team effort reunited Maddie with her owner of 10 years. But it was just like, I don't know, I, I, relief. And I, I just started crying because I just felt so, like, happy. <laughs> I was just worried about her. It's what we needed. I mean, it makes, it makes us feel good. And Search and rescue members tell me this is the second dog they've helped recover this year. In Powell County, Victor Puente, WKYT. And the home Maddie was about three fourths of a mile from where she went missing. Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir has appointed a work group of 19 people to study the financially struggling Kentucky teachers' retirement system. This comes after lawmakers failed to reach an agreement this year on what to do with that retirement fund. It is protected, or rather projected, to run out of money by 2036 if it is not stabilized. There will be some new rules for drivers at next month's NASCAR race at Kentucky Speedway. NASCAR says it will use a rules package with lower downforce. The package will include a reduced spoiler height, a wider splitter extension, and tires with more grip. But it only applies to the Quaker State 400 in Sparta on July 11th. NASCAR made it to encourage more passing during the race, hopefully leading to more lead changes and better competition. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is officially off the market. He popped the question to University of Kentucky graduate Amy Ryman at a Lutheran church in Germany, where he and his family went on vacation to learn more about their heritage. He then tweeted out a picture of the happy couple with the caption, Looking forward to the rest of my life with this amazing girl. Ryman is from Texas. She got her interior design degree from the University of Kentucky in 2005. She also spent one year as a UK cheerleader. A 16 year old boy attacked by a shark over the weekend says he felt the big fish before he saw it. Hunter Treschel also said he didn't realize what it was until it was biting his arm. He was one of two young people seriously hurt Sunday in shark attacks near Oak Island, North Carolina. Despite losing his dominant hand, Hunter is staying optimistic. I can try to uh, live my life the way I was and make an effort to do that even though I don't have an arm or I can kind of just let this be completely debilitating. Now, just two miles from where he was attacked, a 12-year-old girl lost her left arm below the elbow and suffered a leg injury in a shark attack. And this afternoon, a 10-year-old boy was bitten in the calf by a shark at Daytona Beach. He was treated for minor lacerations and released at the scene. We'll have more reaction from a victim on WKYT News coming up shortly at 5 o'clock. A search for two convicted murderers who escaped prison 11 days ago is widening. Authorities say they have no information the two men have left the area, but it's possible they have moved on. Emily Schmidt reports on the new search strategies. After 1,400 leads and 10,000 acres searched for Richard Matt and David Sweat, officials are broadening the search and how they talk about it. You're referring to it as, as a press conference. I personally would like to refer to it as a pep rally. I think we need to let the community know that since we don't have concrete leads indicating that they may be outside the area, we still need to stay motivated. It's been 24 years since New York state officials have looked this long for a maximum security prison fugitive. 
Long enough that state police are releasing images of what the men could look like after 12 days on the run, acknowledging they could be anywhere. We are concentrating our efforts not only in this vicinity, but throughout the nation and beyond. The only person arrested so far is Joyce Mitchell, accused of helping the two murderers escape. Sources say the convicts also plotted to kill Mitchell's husband, Lyle. We had no information whatsoever that he had prior knowledge uh, of the escape or that he participated or actively assisted in the escape. More than 600 law enforcers remain on the ground searching for clues. A New York State police investigator said they did not waste time by focusing so heavily on the area around the prison. We have to start from the, uh, the you know, zero, point zero. Steadily working their way out, knowing the fugitives may be doing the same. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. Father's Day is this Sunday. If you have not figured out what to get dad yet, we may have an idea for you. Deanne Stevens is out and about at Morning Point where she's finding out about a special event going on there. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys, from Morning Point. Oh, I was close, wasn't I? It's all right. You're doing pretty good for a lady. <laughs> Oh, pretty good for Did you hear what I just heard? We were friends until about three seconds ago. Mr. Mills, Mr. McClure giving me some tips here, uh, preparing for the Father's Day celebration. You guys are excited about the Henry Clay golf team being out here this weekend. Great, great. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. And I think they're excited to be here as well. It is a celebration happening Saturday here at Morning Point to honor dads for Father's Day. The Henry Clay golf team is going to be here with the residents. Talk about your all's participation in this. Why are you guys doing this? Uh, we're here because it's an awesome chance for us to give back to the community because Morning Point is one of our huge sponsors, and it's just a great chance for us to give back. And it's a great way to celebrate dads and to play a little golf. You guys, I bet, play a lot of golf with dads, right? Yeah, definitely. I went out this uh, past weekend and played play with my dad, and I hope to do so for Father's Day for him. Too. Well, and you get to make Father's Day special for other yeah. people. Talk about the importance of that, Gabe. Well, it's really important to uh, give thanks to your dad for all that he's done for you and being a good role model, model through your, your whole life. And what did you guys think about that putt? That I did. What, are you going to give me a few lessons? Yeah. Need to hit it a little harder, don't I? A little bit. <laughs> okay, Susan Neville is with us from Morning Point. Talk about your event this weekend. Why are you guys doing this? We are doing it. Um, to, we would love having the golf team in to, to come in and celebrate with our dads here. We would love to have some dads come in from the community and celebrate with us. So it's open to anyone? Absolutely. Anybody that would like to come in for lunch. We're starting lunch at noon, and then we're doing the putting at the point at 1.30. Okay. Do they need to get reservations? How does it work? How much is it? The, you're, it's free. Absolutely free. Um, you can just come in, stop in, or if you want to call ahead, that would be great, too. Tell folks where you're located. We are at 1.50. Shoreside Drive, right off of Richmond Road. Okay, come be a part of the Father's Day celebration. Mr. McClure, get ready to sink it. Go ahead and sink it for us. Oh. Okay. Hey, he did. Okay, he did okay for a man, didn't he, Mr. Mill? <laughs> he did all right for a man. For, you gonna, for a senior man. For a senior man, he <laughs> says. Come celebrate Father's Day here at Morning Point this weekend. I'm Deanne Stevens. Out and about. Back to you guys. All right, about to get a little crazy there. You would think, after working on Jurassic World, that Chris Pratt, the actor, would be used to seeing dinosaurs. But this video proves that he still gets a little jumpy around prehistoric creatures built uh, by some pranksters. Pretty realistic. Watch what happens. They uh, waited for him to walk down a hallway, and there it is. They put it in motion. It definitely startled the Jurassic World star, but he took it in stride. These are the uh, same pranksters behind the giant spider dog video that attracted millions of views on YouTube last year. Hmm. All right. A man says KFC served him up. There's a real temperature swing going mm -hmm. on right now. It feels like it's in the 90s here. We're in the upper 80s. But then right. down in southern Kentucky, there are places in the 70s. Sure. And plus, Chris, you don't really know if you're going to get rained on uh, because it's hit and miss kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And we're going to see that action, though, really beginning to increase over the next couple of hours. So a lot more hits than misses likely to come up in the next three or four hours into parts of our region. But uh, to illustrate Jennifer's point about the temperatures, look at some of the uh, readings from across the region. 75 Corbin. Frankfurt, we're down to 86. 86 showing up Lexington and Richmond with a mix of sun and some clouds. Southern Kentucky, you've had more clouds and thunderstorm action. What we're seeing though on Defender now 
the areas where we've had a little more in the way of sunshine, all of a sudden, skies are beginning to pop a little bit with some showers and storms trying to develop just to the west of Lexington. Severe thunderstorm warning is out into Meade County uh, near the Brandenburg area, and uh, that is to the southwest of Louisville. That complex of storms likely to be eastbound and down along Interstate 64 over the next several hours. And coming up in a little bit, we'll track the storms over the next few days as they continue to really crank up. Let's get a check on traffic now with Officer Don. Got a couple of problems. One is a crash on Man War at Clearwater Way. It is on the outer loop of Man War, and the right lane is blocked at the moment. Three cars involved in that crash. Uh, there's also a very heavy traffic on the outer loop of New Circle at Lee's Town. The bumper to bumper there, that's just rush hour stuff for traffic getting bottled up for the exit ramps. And then finally, uh, outbound Brussels Road, approaching uh, Brussels and Alexandria. It's about a 10 minutes away. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Don. To become a WKYT Live driver and download the Waze app, go to WKYT.com. Under the News tab, click on Traffic for more information. A tiger goes on an airport tour, a beaver rides in a patrol car, and a fried rat controversy. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. A toy tiger got quite the tour of Tampa International Airport. The tiger's owner, a six-year-old boy, mistakenly left Hobbs behind when he and his family went on vacation. Rather than putting him in lost and found, the airport operations manager took Hobbs on a grand tour, snapping pictures along the way. Hobbs checked out the air traffic control tower, visited workers on the runway, and even stopped for some gelato. When the boy and his family returned, they were reunited with Hobbs and got a picture book of the Tigers Airport Adventures. Quite a little trip there. Yeah. Well, all he wanted, it seems, was a little Chick-fil-A. Police in Bellevue, Washington, recently threw a 45-pound beaver in the back of their patrol car. Officers say they found the disoriented animal near the entrance of the fast food restaurant. With the help of a dog catch pole, they put Phil in the cruiser and drove him to a nearby beaver pond. And just like that, it hopped out of the car and went back into the water, but not before leaving a few surprises in the back seat. Gifts that required some heavy cleaning. What kind of surprises? A little mess left behind there. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, a KFC customer in Los Angeles says he got more than some finger licking good chicken with his order the piece of chicken in the shape of a rat. The uh, customer says when he bit into it, it was hard and rubbery. He posted pictures on Facebook and kept the piece of chicken in his freezer. He took it back to the restaurant. He claims the manager said it was indeed a rat. But KFC says there is no evidence that that is true. No evidence. The company also says the customer is avoiding them. All right, we'll move on from that. Yes. All right, much more to come right now, including an update on your weather situation with Chris on WKYT now at 5 o'clock.